Hello everybody, what's up? CR Wrestling Commentary, Cedric here talking and giving my thoughts on the real reasons AEW's ratings plummet. Um, but before getting into that, I need to address Jimmy Whisper's question, which he asked a good bit ago, and I need to respect that. So before I do any commentary, I'm going to do one on his question. Like, What do you think of the Pope D'Angelo Dinero? In general, I think he's been underrated. I think he's been underutilized. I think he's been exceedingly and extremely overlooked. I think it's a crime against professional wrestling to not give him his due, whether it was WWF, WWE, TNA, NWA. They, I don't know what it is about him, but a company does not want to give him his due. They just don't. He's got the gift of gab. He's got a cadence that draws the crowd. He tells a story vocally and physically in the ring. He's always carried himself like a champion. He's always carried himself like a star. He's always carried himself like a professional wrestler. He always on topic, always on point. He delivers everything with conviction. His in-ring work is just phenomenal. The only reason you wouldn't want this guy as your top guy would be political. Somebody that you look at a little bit more than him is calling a few shots maybe against him or everyone in general. For example, he asked, uh, let's see, do you think he was robbed of the title by 2010's Hogan Carterism or that he was overhyped? No, he wasn't overhyped. You, the Pope was underhyped. I, I Look, I didn't remember any of that stuff. I went back and I read the Wikipedia and I was like, oh crap. I do remember a few things. I can, I can remember the in-ring images. I can remember things. I was like, I re and then I remember, bow, it hit, bam. I remember Pope was doing good. The crowd was into him. The commentary on him was positive uh, for, you know, from, during his uh, the, the, the in-ring match calls. And when Hogan was there, got there and was there, it sort of, he went quiet. He stopped wrestling the contenders and started wrestling those opening match card guys. And I remember the whole, there was a small feud. And I haven't read the wiki in about, I think, eight days. And I'm still coming out of severe foggy headedness. But I'm like, I remember Pope went from like the guy to be nobody and certain matches falling apart around him and him standing in the ring looking like what is going on I remember that I remember him standing in that ring looking like what's going on like he was confused I remember that I remember reading the wiki and I was like maybe that's why he was like that because things went not the way a match should go. And if you can pull up those matches, I know I'm right on that. A couple of the matches, he just stood in the ring with his hands on his hips, wondering what is happening around him, and he went right back into it. Now, my thoughts on the Pope currently, everything I said in the opening still stands. It really does. However, you know, Although he's added some finishes to his repertoire, he still likes to doing those running double knee uh, into the back. So, I don't know if it's a, uh, a thing on um, just, is it a wrestling thing and you can't do this? I don't know. It seems like someone should be able to do what I'm about to suggest. And Pope would look good doing it. Or maybe he just don't want to take that bump. But... It'd be nice if he could do those running double knee strikes into the back 
grab a hold of the, the chin or, or, or around the clavicle or the shoulders and then yank himself back so the opponent can understand I got to go with this and do a fallback into the reverse lung blower. A double whammy, if you please. You know? It'd be difficult to do the next part I'm thinking about, which would be that he could slip his knees between the arms and roll back into a ghetto stretch. A nice transition, but he could, something he could only do with a lightweight or someone that's roughly a little bit heavier than him, but very flexible. But other than that, just the running double knees, reverse lung blower, drag him out from the corner, pin him. I would, I would like that, you know, because the double knees look good, but Pope is so safe in that ring. He takes care of his opponent so well. Those are the one of the few things that you can look through and see that he's gentle with. So he needs that extra. That's what I think. And yes, I do think Pope was robbed of being a world champion one or even two times over in TNA or during his TNA run where he could have looked real good. But when Hogan got there, if you remember this, if any of you remember this, when Hogan got there, everyone that was on top dropped. Everybody. So it wasn't just Pope. It's not just him. Everybody dropped. So when he got there, I was like, nobody's going to do anything now. They took away the six-sided ring, they, you know, which to a lot of people is like, yay. And to some people, it's like, no. So, I mean, Hogan got there and it was an immediate, instant change. And I gotten so used to seeing the hexagonal ring for so long, when he when they changed it to the squared circle, I was like, this looks naked. It looks weak. So that those those are, those are my thoughts on on all of that. Um, but look, Jimmy Whisper and everybody else out there, when Cedric and I watch wrestling, we have our thoughts on people, and we. We don't want to, I don't want to, I personally, I don't want to waste those thoughts on just open air anymore. So for you to, because we're trying to find our, our pacing, our calling. So for you to, you know, certain wrestlers, actually all of them eventually, we're going to give our thoughts on what we think of them at the moment. All right. So we're going to try to do a list. So it's going to be, no, we'll just do the, that, that person. And the date so we don't have to put you know our thoughts on such and such one two three it's gonna get lost we just put our thoughts on this person and then the date and we'll put the company so our thoughts on such and such nwa um february 44th 33 44 something like that you know just <laughs> i mean real we're gonna use real dates not not fake dates like that um you know star date no we're not don't do that and can anyone, if there's a Trekkie out there, can anybody tell us how they did those star dates? I'm just curious. Because star date, earth date, obviously do different things. Just if, if anyone's a Trekkie out there. All right. Because we've listened. It's like, that doesn't make sense to anything. You know, we try to divide it and all this other stuff and separate it to month, date, year, and reverse it if we could. It, it won't work out for us. Or maybe we just didn't do enough. You know, so it's... it's Help us out. Help us out. Now, let me get into uh, the thoughts on the real reasons AEW's ratings plummet. Okay. And we don't do what K100 do. When they, the real reason. And it's not. They don't really get into it. If you ever listen to K100 on those things, the real reason, they don't really get into it. It's clickbait. I don't want to do clickbait. I don't want to do click titles. You come here, you see the real reasons, then I'm going to give you the real reasons. So here we go, AEW. They can start off with 1.2 or 1.4 million people. And by the time it's over, they will average somewhere in between 690,000 to 820,000 in that range. Why? 
Why? Okay. These are not excuses. These are not excuses for their ratings. Okay. We listened to Jim Cornette and he was like, WWE boring as hell, but they can keep their people. They don't have a 25% drop off and whatnot. Of course they don't. Because it's, you know, it's tribalism. AEW doesn't have a large tribe. This is one of them. Okay. WWE has about three to four generations of fans. And they have lost a lot of them after the Attitude Era. Because after the Attitude Era, that's when people started coming out about wrestling and how it's not quote-unquote real. Although wrestling is extremely real just depends on what you mean by real and not real people started coming out about that people started like well this ain't real so i'm not gonna watch it it's not just that but still aew they don't help that situation so yeah they lose a lot of people Okay, I'm going to get down to some nitty gritty on that losing some people stuff. And y'all ain't going to like it, but it's true. While WWE, their tribe is generational. AEW's tribe is simplistically tiny. It's indie lovers. It's people that don't care about pro wrestling. It's people that just care about seeing... The moves, the big moves, the the table spot, the chair spot, the leaping over the rope spot. They're spot monkey lovers, but they aren't pro wrestling lovers. This person is a wrestler and they do these tricks and flips. And they're like, yes, because that's all that's left for them. So in the indies, you want to be a star. You want to be the greatest person alive. You want to get those major movie picture deals, baby. You want that. But you can't get to the WWE. WWE has gobbled up everything. Vince McMahon has gobbled up and destroyed pro wrestling, basically. Just so he can monopolize it. There's no other group out there so you got to get over and they don't understand what over is because if they did the indie groups would have come to prominence and WWE would have got shut down if they understood that's the truth indies would have come to prominence and they would have been the main while WWE would have taken a serious backseat but they didn't understand what professional wrestling is and what it's truly all about so it's spot monkeys that just cater to those that want to see spots. And since they like the dives, the flips, and it gets the crowd to go, wow! And they do stupid things to get the crowd to laugh. So they want to laugh and they want to wow. And if you do that, then you you leave them, as Steve Austin said, you leave them happy. But the Indies, they want every match to leave happy. Even the first match. They're trying to get the audience to leave happy. They don't understand the closing of the show. They don't get it. So this comes to AEW. And that's all it was. And they were untrained, unprofessional. They were just people in tights that learned stunts, barely learned how to take them. And the crowd just ignored. Hey, these people are standing outside for like 15 seconds gathering up so they can catch this person diving and cushion their fall. The crowd would ignore that or see it and just say, well, that's just part of the show. That's just what they do. That's just how it is. And the people that are WWF, that they they grew up generationally, they also dislike WWF, WWE. They dislike it. So when AEW shows up, they hear it's a competitor. They hear that it's sports-based. They hear all of this stuff, and when they check it out, and they see 
all of that silliness happening, they're like, what's this? And then when you, the, the, they had, you know, it, the AEW had been, look, keep it real, AEW had been warned by Jim Cornette that knows pro wrestling. That doesn't mean he knows society, but he knows pro wrestling. He knows that pro wrestling is a manipulation of society. As messed up as that is, as messed up as, as y'all might not like to hear that, but pro wrestling is how to manipulate the people to, 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 to wanting to see more. All right? You tell them what they want to hear, then you show them what you told them. Best that you can. Show the attempt. That's the idea. I know y'all hate bringing up, you know, you don't want me bringing up politics on wrestling, but that's what Donald Trump did. He told the people what they wanted to hear, and then he more or less, air quotes, tried to deliver it, and the people galvanized around that because he told them what they wanted to hear, then he tried to deliver on what he said. All right? I'm going to leave it at that when it comes to politics. But that's what got the people around him. And that's what gets people around wrestling. AEW has a tiny tribe of spot monkey lovers. And that is going to be roughly 690,000 people. That's what it's going to be. And you got people that have grown up watching indie wrestling, watching it on YouTube, watching it on other little platforms. So that's all they think wrestling is. They remember WWE's, well, WWF attitude, some of them do, or they went back and watched it, and they saw how they were bigger than life. They gave the scathing promos. They did puppies, puppies, you know, legendary status wrestler reduced to commentary on puppies. That should have been like, wait, what have we done? But AEW can't compete with generational tribalism with a current generation tribe. You're not, and they're trying to compete, which is the dumbest thing. I've said that since any, this AEW came up, trying to compete with another company is the dumbest thing you can do. Because in order to compete, you're going to have to start copying certain things. You're going to have to start doing other things. And when people see that, they see, oh, this person from WWE left. AW picked this person up. You see that trend. What's there to look forward to? Because what happened? People started saying what? Well, AW is just WWE. They got all the stars from WWE. It's just WWE. And then what happened? Well, they're not using them well. They got nothing. They've got nothing. You're just going to buy WWE stars, and then you're going to use them wrong. You're going to bury them. They're going to kick out of everything or, or, or have an extreme competition with somebody that they should run over. And that's it. That is AEW's history. Now, bringing up history... That is another reason why AEW's ratings plummet. Because they have the history of horrible booking. It's easy to win Booker of the Year when the person voting for that or creating the voting blocks for that is a number one fan or fanboy of one of your tag teams or one of your trios that seem to corner the market on if somebody is relevant or not while at the same time claiming that somebody is only doing something to stay relevant which exposes their business so you've got the same old same old happening and then you've got this happening what is happening in AEW that is going to keep people in seats? People go to wrestling just so they can say they've been there. 
they go there to get the easy access to merch instead of it being delivered and costing a whole lot more. People go to wrestling because they want to also be seen on TV. They also want to be a part of that quote unquote history and say, hey, I was there. Can't see me, but I was there. AEW's booking. Let's just take Hook for instance. He showed he he has his few. He's been there. He doesn't do anything. He just doesn't do anything. And then he starts. Hey, he, Hook is in action. He's been trained. He's done. Let's do this. And they see what he does. And what Hook does is old school style pro wrestling, and nobody notices it. That's why people glatch on so fast. Oh, it's all judo based. Yes, yes. It's a completely different style than what anyone else is working in that ring. Yes, I get that. But he comes through and he puts on a clinic on his opponent. He just physically dominates them. And it looks legit. Hook ain't about talking. He ain't about much of anything. You got a problem? Let's settle it. I ain't got to talk to you. And people kind of like that badassery. You know, so they get behind Hook. But then what did they what did Tony Khan do? Instead of you go out there every every week, or at least on Rampage, only on, I would do it for Rampage. Every Rampage, you go up there and you just house somebody. And when we give you competition, that's when it can be back and forth or something. But no. They start booking him with these idiots. You know, and I'd hate to say that, and I only, you know, because I, I like Dan Housen. You know, I like a lot of these other people, but he goes out there, and now it's like a car, a, a comedy bit every single time, and Hook just falls into that, and people love Hook, but they just keep falling into crap, and getting Hook is he climbing any charts? Is he getting any more noticed? Nope. And is he here this week? Yeah. What about next week? Nope. Next week? Nope. Next week, somebody's got a problem. But my team up with Hook. Why him? He hasn't been around. It's sporadic booking is not good booking. People are creatures of habit. People will find patterns. It's what we do. So if your stars are not out there every week. You need to get yourself, you're going to do, look, you you give 20 minutes to 24 minutes of airtime to a trios match. You could easily, in that 20 minutes of time, you can fit three to four, maybe even five matches in that. You really could. You know? Now go out there and have a little, you know, three to five minute, a little squash match or something. You know, get your stars over with some of the, the, the smaller people. And then those, it's, five minutes is a long time. There can be a, a competitive rate within three minutes and then the next two minutes, bam, done. They get housed, they get beat. Whoo, that was a tough one, but hey, look at what how cool I was at the end. There you go. The, the, the person that got beat looked a little good. You know, shined a little bit, move on. AEW ain't about that. People don't want to see their major star be highly competitive with somebody they don't know. <laughs> they don't want that. AEW, also, another reason for their ratings going down is because they... It's not their fault. This is not AEW's fault. But... um. I thought they was getting on something of uh, because I've been saying it for a couple of years. But last and Cornette, well, last anyway, he spoke about how the younger generation just isn't, you know, doing cable. They're not getting cable. Satellite, dish, whatnot, cable. They're not doing that. It's internet only. So when they watch these cable programs, it counts. Okay, but when they don't, then there's no number. AEW gets more viewers probably than WWE. You just won't know about it. 
Why? Because there is a area online that I go to to watch my pro wrestling. And the view count for AEW is about 640,000 people. During a live show, about 640,000 people. That's about it. So, what you see on TV, <clears throat> when those numbers drop, and it's like, oh yeah, they only got 800,000. You need to add another 600,000 to it. When you see that 1.2 million, you need to add another 600,000. Maybe a minimum of 314,000 is the lowest I've ever seen it. So you got to think about that. They can watch online, like let's say online costs, let's say 80 bucks. That's a lot. Your online, just getting online might cost about $49. Okay, that's still too damn much. But it's a lot cheaper than these $119 and $130 uh, deals for cable or, or, or dish or satellite or whatnot. And then let's bundle it and make it more because of those hidden fees. Because you're paying for the football packages that you didn't want more so than the actual package that you got that you really wanted it's the sports teams like that that's making those rates stay high so you've got that going on and the reason that they do that is because the one it's, a, it's the internet generation and it's going to stay that that's what it is you go online you got everything at your fingertips you got TV channels and TV shows and people that can't get it, they watch it the next day because, you know, someone can record the main show and then put it up online without commercials and then you can watch it. Sit down and watch it the next day or two or three hours later. These people don't want to pay an absorbent amount of money, especially, uh, it is, this is political again, but when politicians have allowed the deregulation and all the the price gouging and quote unquote inflation is happening. People can, people are literally buying expired food to save money. It's not even to save money, it's to not pay the absorbent price. When things were 98 cents and now they're $2.40, when we used to be able to go and get a box of chicken and stuff for $16, you know, back in the day, and then it went up to about $24. In the 2010s, now it's on average 32 to 34 dollars. So, guess what might not get bought, huh? Inflation rules a lot. So, people only get what they need because that's all they can afford. And even then, they're trying to figure out which are they going to do, which are they not going to do. You know, which bill gets cut off, gets what cut off later. You know what bill that can they always do without? Cable bill, satellite bill, but they gotta have internet. In Germany, internet's free because it's a life essential. Without the internet, you're screwed. But here, they get to charge an arm and a leg, and they get to throw the control the throttle of how much bandwidth you get, so you have to pay more to get more megabytes per second, and then you got these other places out there doing all this other stuff. So. The ratings are controlled by inflation. They're controlled by absorbent internet prices. They're controlled by the fact that AEW can't get their booking straight. They get the, it's, the, the ratings are controlled or, or they drop because it's modern tribalism versus generational tribalism. And going on that history, AEW has a strong strong, unshakable, unbreakable history of having an, a, a great opening segment where you see some good or great wrestling and then it drops right off. And people do this. Where is the wrestling? They look for who? Right now, they're looking for Ricky Starks and who he works with. They're going to look for Hobbs. Trust me, Hobbs segment is going to be up. 
They look for FTR. Who, what I said, they're looking to get out of AEW. They losing those titles. I told you they was going to lose at Wrestle Kingdom. They did. They're losing the belt. They're going to try to get out. Respect them or lose them. It's that simple. They ain't trying to be the top unbeatable. No. Respect them or lose them. Make a choice. In addition, when it comes to the history, they're going to skip through every single piece of craptacular wrestling and they're going to skip past the girls. They're going to skip because it's, it's female wrestling connotation in general. People don't like that's the people's fault. And that's part of the, the modern wrestlers fault. These modern wrestlers don't get it and they won't get it. All right. The top female star Jade Cargill Jade is the top but now she done plateaued in her mind so she doesn't have to get any better and that's where she failed that's where that's where she's gonna crumble because eventually somehow some way there's gonna be another female top dog like that that's gonna get there and show her up because they can pro wrestle where Jay can she's really good at what she do but she ain't trying to elevate she's not trying to learn she's keeping her body fit and tight but that's not getting the wrestling better I love some Jay Cargill but I'm also real about it so all of these are the reasons why AEW's ratings are they just plummet they do. Poor, you know, schizophrenic booking, not respecting the actual top talent so that your your spot monkeys can do their things, eating up great points of show with Kenny Omega and his group that don't do anything different. It's all the same and, it's, and it looks all choreographed when people want to see a fight. Your meager tribal, your meager tribe versus generational tribalism. You know, government allowing such grotesque inflation and price gouging. So people can't afford, young people cannot afford to uh, get cable, to have those views be counted like that. So they go online where they can. And that's, that's what, that's, those are the reasons there's some more out there a lot of people honestly keep it real they get turned off because they don't like Dave Meltzer they don't like they they don't like the young bucks even those that were hardcore fans of them they start seeing certain things and it's like I ain't gonna shout against them I'm just not gonna support them you know they see those things you know what you see FTR with the Briscoes like crazy right so why can't the young bucks get in there and you know chop it up like that why can't they do that what's up with that why is it FTR can't win the big belts on AEW why did this other team win them and then they beat FTR a team that they wouldn't have been able to beat you know several months to a year ago they start seeing little patterns. Like I said, people are creatures of, of habit and we will find patterns. So what's going on? They had the NBA deal. NBA season's coming up. All right. It's coming up, y'all. If it's not already really here, I'm not into sports like that anymore. I just stopped caring when I realized I was like, I think these other sports are faker than pro wrestling. But that's just how I feel. That don't make it true. That's just how I feel. I, I don't even put stock into how I feel. It's just, it's, it's an opinion. It's not neither here nor there. It's just a conversation starter or just right in the middle. I don't believe it. I don't disbelieve it. I just think some of them might just be faking in pro wrestling. Don't make it true. 
Don't make it false. It's just where it is. It's just my thoughts. Um, so I've, I've gone long. Um, you know, I do these like this, but they're going to be shorter. You know, they're, they're going to be shorter because I'm going to get right into me and CJ. Hopefully it'll be us. We'll be talking about the wrestlers that we like, why we like them and things like that. Um, if you got questions or anything like that, put them down in the comment section below. It's all good. I, I still need to do stuff for Spreaker. It's just that some of those the things are so embarrassing. I don't, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to, you know, it's, I don't want to, but it happened. These things happen. Um, and they all happened. Um, wow. Ugh. See, that's why I, that's one reason why I haven't done it. They happened somewhere like the very late, like 98 into 2000. Uh, six, four, something like 2004, 2006. You know, there's these things. So I'll just tell you the company and I can tell you where and who it involved and what happened. So they will be short. They will be short. But these are things that happen. Now, I'm not going to give them an order. But these are things that happened. Um, <laughs> I will I will start off with the worst one. The absolute worst one. I'm going to put that on Spreaker. So that's down in the comment section podcast. That I'll put that up later today. It'll be um, during. It'll, I'll put it up during. Uh, when I start rendering the road. Uh, CR5 Pro Road. When I start rendering that. In Filmora. Yeah, I did the ending. So Filmora 7, not 12. Because Filmora 12 got issues. If anybody out there from Filmora happens to hear it. But by the time they do, it would be on 15 maybe. <laughs> but it involves me and Colonel De Beers. I think it's the same guy that innovated the De Beers special or the body buster. Um, basically, uh, the unarmed trapped styles clash and things like that. So it might be him. It might not be him. He might have just taken the name. I don't know. I just know his name is Colonel De Beers, and it was a real nasty, nasty meeting with me and him. And it's a bit heartbreaking for me, but I, I can understand his anger. Just not his word choice towards me. So uh, that's that'll be the first one because I want to get the nasty one out the way, and then we can do when I humiliated myself in front of Matt Hardy with a simple question and uh, and uh, you know I was gonna let my cousin die because he's an idiot, and <laughs> this this is all about wrestling and me crying at a wrestling ring. Uh, there's a lot. <laughs> there's a lot. So there's, you know, I guess there's a lot. I don't know. But yeah, that's what you can look forward to in the 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 weeks to come. I'll try to put one out a week. And if there's a really good one out there, somebody wants to ask a question, and you know, I'll probably put that on Spreaker or whatnot. Or if I get a lot of questions, I'm gonna check Monday to Friday. And then I'm going to try to do whatever questions. I'm going to do that as one show. Hopefully you all of you like it. And I'll put that on Spreaker. That's what, I, that's what I'm going to do. Because YouTube, you, 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 YouTube, you suck. You just, you suck. And I'm only here because right now there's no other place. Politically speaking, you are... A one party system and others will not give another party a chance so you get to do whatever you want to do and ruin lives and you know it so everybody we need another party out there because YouTube can't just be the dominant one so you know <sighs> with that this has been CR wrestling commentary thoughts on the real reasons AEW ratings plummet it's been Cedric Kennedy as your, your host with that
Y'all take care and see you next time.